time for you to be catch your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and spicy memes. I'm Marissa Roberta. And I am Brody Moore, and this is how the show is going to work. We're going to present all the goodies we've gathered in which we will discuss and most likely argue, but luckily for all of us, there is a wonderful mute button we can press to shut each other up when we need to. Oh, yes, and it might actually get used today, so shout out to oh. chat. We like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting all the truth, so let's get to it. For our first topic, the most famous gamer on the planet is looking to be known for more than just Fortnite. In an interview with the Los Angeles Times, Ninja spoke about how he wants to be known for more than just being the Fortnite guy. In particular, Ninja wants to be remembered one day as the grandfather of gaming, in that he opened the door to making streaming just as viable a career choice as being an actor or a pro athlete. So, Brody. <laughs> I feel, I already feel his negativity, like I feel it, it's his aura, he has negative things to say about Ninja, but do you feel like he should be known, like should be known for more than just being the Fortnite guy and maybe given some credit for making this a viable career? The grandfather of gaming? Are you, get out of your head, dude. Jesus, like <laughs> the grandfather of gaming? So many more people deserve that title above you. You just happen to be streaming a game that got popular and kids watched you. So like, how does that, what did you do in particular that anybody else couldn't have done? Not much, really. Okay, you know what, maybe he did make a stream PG so he didn't swear so the kids could watch. There, that, we'll give him that. But beyond that, what did you, like, the grandfather of gaming. Gosh dang, that's just, that's just dumb. Yeah. But if you want to be known as more than a Fortnite guy, stream something else. He do does. something to do that. Yeah, but. He, he does, he's been playing more Do it, don't just tell people to start. You can't just say, call me this, okay. without doing anything okay. about it. To be fair, to, to be, be fair. fair. Uh, listen, when there is a print article of anything, any kind of interview that happens and it comes out in print, it does kind of make the person in the interview, like there's always some backlash about it because the person being interviewed always kind of sounds, maybe it comes off a certain way because we're, we're assuming their cadence in our mind, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, listen, I've done print interviews before and I always read them back and I think, oh my God, this girl sounds like a friggin' idiot. Straight up, because yeah. you don't have, it's just the way that I speak and then when it, it translates to print, it just doesn't, it, I don't come across like yeah. the smartest person in the room. Well, so you don't do it when you're talking I, anyways. <laughs> what do I say you look <laughs> like that? So maybe it kind of it isn't, doesn't work in Ninja's favor to do some of these print interviews because every single one that he's done now, there's been backlash about it, right? Um, and yeah, I do agree with you about the grandfather of gaming thing. Obviously, it should not apply to him, especially the gaming <laughs> term, because that gaming is like a big, huge bubble. There's so many different lanes, uh, so many different avenues to go down in gaming. So gaming as a career, maybe on Twitch? Uh, not really, because uh, there was a bunch of people before him, but I guess he brought it to the light in the mainstream. I'm so not going to take away his credibility for the things he's done. He's done some things. Yeah. You're not the goddamn grandfather of gaming. Get over yourself. Moving oh on. My goodness. Tifu's duo's partner, Cloak, is in uh, talks with FaZe Clan about the f his future contract. Cloak said in a stream that due to Tifu's ongoing legal action in his own contract, he can't go into detail on what he's talking with them about. He has probably said that he wants to keep playing with Tifu, which FaZe might not allow considering the lawsuit. Whether that means he'll leave FaZe to play with his partner remains to be seen. Hmm. Marissa. What should he do in this situation this is really tough. It, it's Closey. so tough because we don't uh, know the legalities. We don't know what's been said. We don't know what's going on behind the scene. Uh, I'm a little triggered though with um, Banks just in some of the uh, moves mm -hmm. he's made. And even like the, the video that was posted yesterday, I don't know if you saw, like he was giving out chains to like um, diamond necklaces or something to like a bunch of players that were around him. But like he had the only like r like actual FaZe Clan chain and then he was giving, because they partnered with Champion. So it had mm -hmm. like the Champion logo in the chain. So it's just like he's giving it to them to promote their big time partner so they can he can get more money out of it. Like there's just a lot of like little insidious things that are happening here within this world, maybe perhaps within this organization, and maybe Cloak is seeing this now too. Um, so I, I don't know. May, there, there's just so much going on that we have no idea, and we're all just making assumptions at this point. Uh, that, well, that's what I'm saying. If, if Cloak has got no problem with this, like then I don't. I don't get, like, that, it just makes me believe more and more that FaZe isn't the bad guy in this whole situation. No, no, but how, but how because, can Because, like, it, otherwise that? he would be public about this as well, too, right? Well, no, because... Or he's just an idiot no, and signed Brody, a good contract, no, right? No, like, listen, if you're part of an organization and you're getting paid all kinds of bank and they're treating you well, why would you turn on them? 
You know, even if they are doing like maybe some insidious stuff or maybe their their contracts aren't really the greatest and maybe they do take a lot from their players, but they've also given them a leg up and you feel loyal to this brand. Like, and, and so many people are obsessed with you now because of this brand, because it has that kind of power. We, d we just don't know what goes on in their minds, right? So mm -hmm. the fact that they've received so much fame and popularity from this exact logo, they don't want to leave that logo mm -hmm. because that logo gives them life and brings them all kinds of bang. So would it, would it hurt right now for, for him to leave alongside Tifu? And, I mean, and like go with or just go solo even without an orc listen it would be a power move it would be a huge power move for them mm -hmm. both to leave and then team up and maybe start their own thing together and and maybe some other it's a domino effect maybe some mm -hmm. others will follow we don't know because we don't know how it that's the thing too is that when oh we're right out of time <laughs> <laughs> All right, in 2019, LEC Summer Split is just a few days away, and Rogue has made some big changes to its roster. How big are these moves? How about promoting its entire academy team to the LEC? Rogue has slowly promoted players from its academy squad to the main team over the past five months, but most have joined in the past few weeks. For reference, Rogue ended the spring split in last place and has not signed any free agents to its roster in the short offseason. Brody, yeah. do you think this is a good strategy? Strategy? Like, do you think, I don't know, throwing, like, just promoting up players from their I mean, academy team is a good idea instead of maybe drafting some players that are already, have already been in it for a minute? I mean, I don't know anything about League of Legends, so I can't speak to their particular you know team. Well, barely, but, like, okay. I, I can't speak to their particular academy. I definitely don't know anything about their academy team. Yeah. So whether it's, like, maybe these guys are just actually really good and they believe, well, obviously, they believe in them, mm. but I guess I could talk more generically on, like, you know, is it good to put, you know, unvetted rookies into um, a scene like this mm. that that's tougher because like we've, we've seen it in so many esports where like players are so good online mm. you know those bedroom warriors are so good at playing on these online tournaments mm -hmm. but when it translates to the stage that's a whole different story I mean Absolutely. we've all been in esports events and mm -hmm. it's like when you're in when you're in those tournaments and like the crowd is roaring it changes absolutely everything for sure but maybe this is rogues way of getting them prepared for just a life in this world, a life at land. So why not? Yeah, he keeps moving the desk on me. Uh, just a, a life at land, right? So we, you're the worst. I, I do think that there is something to it. Like, obviously, they're not going to, uh, nobody expects them to perform incredibly well mm -hmm. because it's the academy team facing off the big that's boys. That's the thing, it's like they're, they're going in with low expectations. So yeah. that's kind of on the, on the in their favor as well because they, their team was literally last. Like their, their actual like vets couldn't do it. So yeah. like I don't think anyone's expecting them to do anything huge here. They right. got really nothing to lose at this point. So I feel like you might actually have, this actually might be good because if you mm -hmm. put if, like an actual vet onto the team to help walk them through a lot of this, they get a coach to do that. I think behind the scenes the coach yeah. will say, be prepared for this, this and this. If they put an actual pro on there, the pro might try to take charge and have too much structure was I think sure. maybe this lack of structure just running in there letting these guys have a you know just kind of a just a half adder I yeah. feel like that actually really could help broke here nothing Absolutely. to lose going full gusto and they have a relationship already because they played together before just in the mm -hmm. academy so I mean why not give it a shot um, also maybe rogue is saving some money by not having to sign or yeah. do anything outside of that so I mean it's all about the money remember that people Kind of On to another org, Cloud9 has signed a brand new deal with Puma to produce a full apparel and footwork collection for its teams later this year. The deal, which is rumored to be worth millions of dollars, mm. will see Cloud9 gear sold at Puma stores around the world. Uh. The only issue with the deal are that Puma can't produce either League of Legends jerseys or Overwatch gear due to existing contracts. Mm. But it is another sign that esports and fashion are getting closer and closer together. Yeah. Because we know the nerds sometimes don't know how to dress properly. Well, I, I mean, okay, just give me your take right true. now on esports fashion. Because uh, I, I, I got some thoughts I'm, too. You okay? I don't. I don't think there's some, anything inherently wrong with it. I think okay. that people dress comfortable because they need to. I don't know. I don't think there is like an esports fashion at the moment. There are. Mm -hmm. There have been companies that have put out um, jersey dresses <laughs> for women to wear, which will never happen. Uh, I just don't. I, there maybe mm. there needs to be some kind of fashionable something in place. I'm just not a fashion person. I think Lisa's more the person to ask about I like, that. I like the idea that you're going to start seeing Cloud9 st uh, jerseys and stuff in like Puma stores. So sure. in That's really cool. That, that is a branch out. Yeah. Right? Whereas I, I don't think it really needs to go the other way. Like we don't particularly have to force any kind of no. like fashion or dress in esports. The, the only issue I do have with esports fashion right now is a lot of the pros are wearing their stupid like their like designer sweatpants. You know, like they all got the same sweatpants on that like taper down at the bottom, and then they're wearing like their Yeezys, like these big boat shoes. And I just think it's, like you, they look like they're wearing what like a, a professional athlete 
for a traditional sport would wear yeah. when they're getting ready to play, not well, when they're yeah. playing, right? Like it constantly looks like these esport pros are about to get ready to play like they're but warming they up still but they're walking up on stage in front of millions of people yeah so you're saying there should be some more of a they're uniform little, you want to see a uniform yeah. in place because they have their jerseys on the top you want to see a uniform on the bottom for all the players you yeah, it literally it somewhere. looks it looks like they they woke up uh, out of bed threw on some uh sweats and then their jersey and that's it like they it doesn't look like you came prepared yeah. to play half the but, time but their preparedness doesn't <laughs> need to relate to what they're wearing on their bottoms like and even a lot of them are wearing slides up there too like they just want to be comfortable some some of them just gaming their bare feet too like it I mean it's gross obviously I get being I mean, comfortable but sweats is a little much you know like I don't know I just have an issue with sweats being like fashionable in the first place you see like university <sighs> kids doing this too I just I hate it man it's all about comfort though man no it's just about presenting yourself in public but look at you right now you present yourself in public like this every day and nobody oh, laughs oh wow tonight. that's real good insult uh, good one wow oh my god okay it's time to check in with streamers and clip it let's set the scene for our first clip Josh from Methods World of Warcraft rating team flew one of his viewers to visit and possibly go see a concert with him. It went as awkwardly as you might expect. With knowing he means Except stalking them on their Instagrams, um. he doesn't talk to them. The most intimate he would get to them, I wanking to their pictures. I mostly just masturbate to pornography, not to girls' Instagram photos. I never did to your Instagram photos. Not that it matters, I guess. Um, I feel like so, he tried to yeah. play off a joke and then they just didn't get it. It just fell flat. You gotta read the room sometimes. Yeah, um, I think there's something wrong with, I mean, if you're gonna do it, that's fine. I guess it happens all the time in sports and it happens in esports too. But like when there's a, like it just, the, the insidious behavior, I feel like it's insidious when you like talk to a fan of yours and you kind of like manipulate that relationship to get them to come see you. I don't, I don't like that. I feel like it's kind of I icky. No one said they were no, manipulating it. No, it's it, a little though. icky because you're using your fame and the, and the reason that this person likes you and reveres you for your fame to get them to come and hang out with you. And I guess it happens with famous people all the time, so you know, there's something we can do to stop it. But it's but a, that's it's not a really icky. fair it's to the icky. famous person then, saying that they can't hang out with anyone ever, so now they have to live in isolation? That's not fair no, to but them. It, no, but it puts them up on this platform. But you automatically and it, and it assume them, that they're abusing. But, but you see how like his ego came into play there? Like He was just talking he about joking. whatever. He was no, joking. No, no, uh, yeah. I presume if he wasn't, that's kind of creepy. But like, I just presume like that that was a joke that was, fell flat. He didn't read the room. Um, okay, and, Brody, and you've had, listen, you've had fans um, DM you before. Hmm? Okay, you've had fans DM you before. Yeah, so I leave all my DMs, fans. everything open because I like to be connected to people. Yeah, so you've had, right, and you've maybe started relationships with girls via these DMs. And like, where did those, where did those relationships go? Because they've now, they put you on a pedestal in some way and then they meet you in real life and they're like, oh, well, now what? But, I mean, like, I don't just fly people out. I'm not that rich. <laughs> I, I ain't making World of Warcraft money. Um, but no, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, like, well, you, half my friends are online friends, right? Yeah, and then, then I meet you, them eventually. But don't you feel a certain way about it? Like, you have to be this guy because they think you're that guy. No, because I don't see myself as that guy. So I just go in as a regular dude. And then they realize I'm a regular dude. And they're like, ah, oh, you're actually pretty chill. And then we hang out as regular people. Okay. okay? Don't assume people's motives. Uh, okay. Our next clip comes from Bonsai, who just wanted to eat at a restaurant alone. Hi, you all is really expensive because they have um, like really, really, really good service. <coughs> and Gloria told me that, oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> so do they just bring that to anybody i'm going to that restaurant like uh, like i don't know it kind of singles you out it kind of singles you out like ah, you don't have friends but I like guess. um i don't know i want to go to a restaurant that brings me a giant teddy bear do i get to keep the teddy bear no or is it just like no, kind of companion he, I think he, that's yeah, okay still. Like a, you know a, what that's all right yes it feels bad teddy bear i'd still i'd still go i would now go to that place solo on purpose to hang out with just a teddy bear. Just hang out with a teddy bear, yeah, for sure. I mean, it may, it's great for the stream too if you're a stream IRL streamer and you just want to yeah. like have a fake conversation with a teddy bear. Like, why not? It could be content. Yeah, I like it. Here I'm we are going. talking about it right now. Listen, it truly is the best time of day where we scroll the Twitters to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. Variety Esports host Frankie was recently shooting some content with a player for DreamHack to use over the weekend. She posted a photo to her Instagram and of course, you people with the comments. 
she clears it up with just FYI, because somebody sent her, you're gonna date an esports player? And she just replies, no. Um, Y'all, just because a girl is being nice and is doing her job doesn't mean she wants to date you, that okay? Goes both like, ways. Enough just, of these questions. That's, that's the issue is like, a lot of people will like, talk to like a, a re someone working at retail or whatever, yeah. and, or like a server or, or a waiter or whatever, and then people, people assume just because you're being nice, you're flirting, it's like, no, you realize they're being job. paid to be nice and smile right now. For sure, but also like think of just a, a base <coughs> level of professionalism, okay? Like you shouldn't be fraternizing, like if, you, if you're a host or an analyst or whatever it is, you're part of the production mm -hmm. for something in esports, like fraternizing with players is just, it's just a bad look, like it's unprofessional, and Frankie is a professional, and I just don't, what do you mean you don't know? I mean, I'm, I'm friends with like all the Rocket League guys. No, 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 fraternizing in a, a relationship type of way. Well, I, I, I mean a relationship just means you know someone. You know what I mean, Brody. Obviously, <laughs> they're, ta they're, talking about, they're talking about dating. Are you, oh. are you dating any of the players? Am I dating any of the players? Yeah. No, because then I'd actually have money <laughs> if I was. Why do I even talk to you? Hmm? Why do I even talk to you? Because they pay you to. Okay. <laughs> One of the reasons I want to live long enough is to play Rocket League longer and better than ever. What about you, Mewtwo King? One of the reasons I want to live a long time is to watch more good animes. <laughs> yeah, that's real talk. Yeah. <laughs> Why say many word when little do good? Like, like just straight. When you were do good, yeah. Like straight up, like, I, I'm with him. Like I, I, there's not enough time in this world to see all the good animes out there. Yeah. Like okay. the longer you live, the more animes you can you can watch. That's I'm down. fair. I mean, just all of that. That's any real streaming talk. service, watching anything. There's not much more we can dive into that. It's just real talk. <laughs> I love that. Up. The real talk from the melee community. Listen, our last profound thought is from our good Canadian boy, Rainbow Six Pro Fox A, who is honestly just truth spitting. Everyone with anime profile pics have no chill. <laughs> Speaking of anime, yo, he's not wrong though. You guys need to get your ish together. Can, can I? Get it together. I, I ran into a bit of a con confliction. Oh, that's uh, wait, So, you know how yeah. we talked about it one time, I think, um, about like, you know, you can't take people's opinions seriously if they have their Twitter profile pictures and anime yes, pictures. Yes. Elon Musk, one of my idols, changed his picture to an <laughs> anime photo. But I think it was a troll. Point. But it like that, troll. yeah, that's almost next level because it's just like, he can kind of just do what he wants. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, I ran into confliction. I'm like, no, don't do this to me. Now I have this cognitive dissonance in my mind and I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> no, but, no, he did it to troll, obviously, because a lot of people that troll him have anime pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just did it to get back. But yeah, re real talk. It's just people because like the, the uh, anonymity. Uh, anonymity. Anonymity. I know it's anonymity. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, because the anime pic, they just go off. They don't give crap what you think about them. It, but, it's, but it's weird how it's related to mostly anime pictures. And I like started to have a thought like, OK, so wait. You I actually had a thought? Shut up, Brody, dang it! No, because you love showing me that re-kid. Yeah, that I love re-kid. Re right? And he's always like, just, he's still loud and obnoxious, and I'm thinking like, what if this guy also has an anime pic? Because I do, I, <laughs> probably cause, does. Because he, cause he was talking about, he talks about hentai in one of the clips, yeah. right? He's like, no, no, my hentai! So, uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering like, does, does hentai make young men like aggressive? Does it make them like a little more salty? And like, I'm just because go ahead like, and say this no. all relates to like with the anime <sighs> pics, I'm gonna assume that if you have an anime pic, you also are into hentai. Like just That's... gonna throw that out there. I'm not a fair assumption, you don't think? I think. No. I, I we're think gonna... so. If you're gonna be obsessed enough with anime to use it as your pick, I feel like you're also into hentai. Okay, if you do the study, I will read your study. Okay. But you, I would do the study before we assume <laughs> things about these people. Uh, you might be right though. Let's move <laughs> on because it's time to get to some crowd control. Now, a lot of people think Smash Bros. is the greatest crossover fighting game ever, but if VL Stetson's dream comes true, I think Smash can be one-upped. Mm. It's called the Confrontation Universe. This is a crossover I'd love to see. Marvel, DC, Mortal Kombat, and a bunch of others. Can I point out that Neo would be in that too? Whoa. That I would love to see. I know, nothing funny that I, this is just serious. I saw yeah, this and yeah. I'm like, yeah. I need this game. Um, dude. Who are you adding to the roster? <sighs> well, the thing is she's already there because Wonder Woman would be there with the She DC would be, universe. yeah, yeah. But if there's um, another universe you could add into this. And Animal Crossing. Animal, no, they're already in Smash. You can't use Animal Crossing. So why can't Smash be in this too? Huh? Why can't Smash be in that too? Um, oh, that'd be the ultimate. Oh my God, that is yeah. like crossover of crossovers. It's a crossover of crossover of crossover. All right, let's get the licensing deals. Let's what? make the game. 100, uh, <laughs> sign up to our Patreon and uh, we'll make it happen. <laughs> Sometimes horrific things happen in games that aren't meant to induce scares. This next post is gonna make you jump out of your skin. Quite literally. Oh, Where's that? I just I wanted want, to see. I don't want this. Oh my, <laughs> no, 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 no. Brody, why do you do this to me? Seriously? I, no, this it's is. It's better. It's no. so freaky, dude. 
What Where the? is it? Where is what, it? What's going on underneath there? Oh, uh -huh. that's the pot. That's oh, the whole skin oh. is detached from. <laughs> I think it's a byproduct of the skin. Look at that. It looks like something out of Half Life. That is so. Do you want one gross. of those? Yo, that's next level design though. They they Yo, made, they made that kitty in layers. I think it's because of the skinning, the skinning that thing that you can do. Yeah, yeah, you can get no, pelts and stuff. No, for sure. But literally, I literally just saw a cat today walking away with a little bunny in its mouth, like murder in its mouth, ready to digest, and that in itself grossed me out. And I have this, so and I'm just picturing the little today. bunny getting skinned. Oh, it's awful. It's all about murder. It's today awful. is all about murder. Fine, you know what? I will I will chill it out for our okay. last post. It's a little it's a little nicer. I just want to show you guys the newest uh, update for Rocket League. Oh. I. Okay, so I would play a game like that, but now that I'm thinking, I'd actually want to see that IRL. Like that I actually want to see that happened, like a bunch of dudes flying on drones, Why running into each other and stuff. Do, I use dudes as a collective for everybody. It can be, it can be anybody. Um, but yeah, a bunch of people up in the air fighting and battling with those things. Uh, like you got limbs flying off because yeah, blades are cutting people apart. It's basically like Quidditch, but the only way sport. we could probably play Quidditch IRL, and I would love to try something like that. Are you kidding me? Like we'd all be Green Goblin. It'd be I incredible. I actually would not want to put you on one of those because I've seen you try to do a kickflip on a skateboard. Yeah, but I can ride a longboard. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't do tricks on that, but I would ride. I would just ride it as a regular. <laughs> <laughs> I just see her running out of control. <laughs> flying everywhere. No, no, no. I think it would be good. Uh, I think it would can be we good. get one of these? What's our budget? Um, yes, yeah, so I sign up for a Patreon and uh, <laughs> we'll just make that happen. Listen, that's it for NV to remember. You can hit us up always in our socials. Just say hi and send us some stuff to react to. Send us type in exclamation mark socials right now in chat for all the channels. We'll see you next time.